Hello guys, I hope you are doing good. In this video, we'll see how to implement a sampler function. So basically what we have to do is we have to create a function sampler that will take a function as an input and a count and return a function and that return function will invoke the input function on every count which is when I invoke the sample fourth time then only the sample function will invoke the input function message and hello will be printed. So here hello will be printed. Similarly when I move to the next count so on every fourth count it will be printing or executing the input function or performing any sort of action. So basically uh, for the first fourth so on the fourth count it has printed hello. Similarly going forward on the next fourth it has printed hello and so on. So we have to create this sampler function that will take the count and a function as an input and on every ith count it will execute the input function. So let's start creating this. Let's create the sampler function first. And this sampler function takes a function as an input. Let's call that callback and then a count. So by default, I am initializing the count to one because uh, we want to execute the callback function on every invocation if nothing is passed. Otherwise on every ith, uh, ith count. So here I'll form a closure and I'm using a variable to track how many times the return function right because the sampler function is returning a function how many times the return function is invoked so let's return a function and here i'll be collecting all the arguments and now what i'll do is i'll increment the count so every time the return function is invoked the count will be updated the, that way we will be able to track how many times the return function has invoked. Now because we have to invoke this callback function on every ith count. So let's see if the track is equal equal to the count then we have to invoke the callback function and we can pass the arguments that, have, that we have received to it and after that what we will do is we will reset the track to 0 so that it should start from the beginning. Now if you see so we are getting hello printed over here so let me comment this out. So right now on the fourth count it should be printing hello. Now just to verify right on the fourth count only it's printing let's modify the input function. So here we'll accept the message string and we are going to print that. Now this message string will pass this to sample function and the sampler function because it is a return function that argument will be passed to the callback. So that way we will be able to verify if uh, the desired thing uh, or on the desired call only the sample function is getting invoked. So see if I am passing ABC over here it is getting printed uh, on the third count if I am passing something nothing will be printed so only ABC will be printed. Let's change the invocation call it four times more so let me undo this and then here if I send the pqr so it should print abc and pqr now just to check if things are working properly let's reduce the count let's make it three so these are eight samples so it should be invoked two times now because it's begin invoked on third count so we don't have a value let's pass it over here so abc to this and then pqr to 4 5 6 this and after that we can have another one so let me call this let's remove that to remove the confusion and then here i'm passing lemon Now you see ABC, PQR and LMN is getting printed. If I make the count as 1 right for each invocation things will be printed. So let's say 1, 2, 
three, four, five, and six. So on the every invocation, the callback function will be invoked. So we can see that things are getting printed one, two, ABC, then three, four, PQR, five, six, and LMN. So this is how using closure, you can solve this simple problem. Thank you. See you in the next video.